one of the significant things today, I think the first knockout, post-COVID knockout for the enemy is when the men of God are all gathered together. That's the first victory. Somebody say amen. So we want to also welcome Pastor Claude London today. Thank you for coming and joining us. We have Bishop Bordes and his wife, Sister Norma, is here. And uh, before the Spirit of God uh, does a lot more through us, today is us day to pray. Are you with me? It's not leading you to pray. Later we'll break up in groups. Michael will give the instruction what we're going to do. But tonight, there's an awesome presence of God. Did you realize that? Many of you are fasting. You, are, you have come here fasting and praying because we're going to penetrate through the darkness. Amen. Today is a no-nonsense day. I'm not going to put my body and my flesh thinking at home. Today is a no-nonsense day. We come before the Lord in spirit, soul, and body. We've got to focus that one point and just pray through in the spirit. We knew the... So before we minister uh, and pray together for one another, for the, uh, the pastors who are here for some good reason, I will tell you later why. We knew always somehow Brother Keith was going to share the word of God with us. Uh, it was through Gary and Gloria that I came to know them, uh, to know him and his uh, family. And uh, somehow God always uses a person whom he appoints as a gatekeeper in civil and governmental level. Sometimes the church tend to think we are the only righteous gatekeepers, but God has placed his sons and daughters everywhere. Amen. In all industries, on fields of work. Now, if all the gatekeepers could gather together and pray, imagine what is that. Amen. Today, you and I are gatekeepers today. We are not watching how others are doing. Is that okay? We're going to fight together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your families are all covered. Your livestock, your dog will be happy and smiling when you go back home. So Amen. don't worry about it. Don't fear the enemy. Today is not the day. Today is the day of warfare. We are going fully covered and protected. I don't have to blink and think what is the Lord is doing behind me. His glory shall be my rear guard. Amen. Let's put our hands and welcome Brother Keith Miller as he shares God's word. Um... Some of you know that I serve on city council in Kings Mountain. Um, so in the natural, that's a little important. But it's really symbolic of what's going on in the spiritual. This church is kicking off something new where they're going to seek to pray for government, right? These sorts of things. And what I said, uh, the first service that was done here, Pastor Stephen didn't tell me that he was going to ask me to speak or say anything. I don't even know that he knew. But he asked me to step up because he felt the Lord had asked him to. And I said in 10 or 20 seconds what I thought the Lord wanted said. And I think it was accurate. But what I'm going to try and explain is that, as you were saying, you know, God has people serving in all different places. So I'm in what you might call the mountain of government. And my understanding is that God gave dominion of this earth and this dimension to mankind. That, that was the original plan. That's who dominion was given to. Um, we may not fully know what all of that means and what it's supposed to look like, um, but none of them can do anything on earth unless a human, a man or a woman, requests it gives them permission because the dominion has been given to humans. Um, so right now, we're in America that most people would say is the last hope for humanity. If America is supposed to be the, the best and last hope of humanity, why aren't we? What's the problem? So my point is, Although all the raw materials are here in America, for it really to be in the natural, the instrumentality of the salvation of humanity from the oppression of evil, right? It's handicapped. Uh, because the church has been running blind and deaf. But 
Pastor Stephen, and this is what the Holy Spirit showed me, enemies taken 150, 200 years to infiltrate every institutional mountain of our culture and put layers of resistance in place, right? In real time, 24-7, interactive communication, we could get intelligence on what the enemy is up to, what he's planning, before he does it, and pray into it and stop it. Right. Or, where are the hidden portals, or principalities, or demons, or whatever other kind of evil spirit being is operating in our community to have control and havoc and interfere with the, the lives of not just the saints, everybody. What I don't think the enemy planned for was for God to take people like Stephen, Pastor Stephen, and his brother, and bring them over here and awaken that sleeping giant. Yes. All right? The vision, I shouldn't say vision, the thought <laughs> that I had, because well, it was a little visual, but it was mostly thought, was God's going to build something, right? A, a, a big, beautiful thing, right? Yeah, we're, we're end times and all of that, but he's also going to, he's still building. And he's not done with America, and he's not done with the world. He, he's going to build something, and he's got all the lumber here, and he's got the nails and the drills and the screws and everything he needs. But the contractors are blind, and their hands are broken and tied up. But he sent somebody over here who can unblind their eyes and untie their hands. So I'm expecting that what we're doing here, because, you know, we're sort of, this is where the, the church, right, is stepping into that mountain of government through prayer, which is the way it should be, right? Pastor Stephen and what he's teaching and equipping us to do is enabling us to be that ecclesia, right? That organism. In Isaiah, there's several titles given for Jesus, and one of them, it's a description as well as a title, it says the government is on his shoulders. So anybody who wants to argue that the church and the state like are totally separate and should never be together, they are missing that title. The government's on his shoulders. So that's why I think, you know, my being here, it's not just because I'm, you know, an elected official locally, but that also carries with it some prophetic significance in the spirit realm. Because as I said when I was here at your anniversary, and when I was here at the first time, in my heart, what I think is happening is God is saying, Somebody who he has moved in the natural and anointed and appointed in the spiritual to be his representative for government, like Romans 13, 1 through 7, right? right? The human governments are the agents of God for justice and order on this planet, right? That combination of mantle in the spirit and the natural is extending the scepter of authority, of welcome is using the key of authority to open the door for the ministry of Jesus my King Church and Pastor Stephen to step across sort of that breach between these different mountains and have the church in America begin to take her rightful place. As you begin to pray for the government officials, in the two years that I've been walking this path, one of the things I've learned that I, I want you to hear is that we can ask Holy Spirit for revelation regarding the elected officials we're praying for. And you may or may not get it, but you can ask. And we've asked the same thing with respect to a city, you know, Please, may we have revelation of what's going on? What's, what problems is the city of Kings Mountain or the city of Shelby or Cleveland County or the Cleveland County commissioners were shown things that can be prayed for and the angels come and clear it out and things change in the natural. There's evidence. In my opinion, there's evidence showing up 
in the natural that is fruit of this kind of effort, this kind of flow of the prophetic, where the seven spirits are active, and he's giving his intercessors information, and they're praying into it in faith, and heaven is responding, and we're seeing change in the natural. And so I just wanted to leave some of those encouraging words and thoughts as we begin praying for government in this area. I, I wrote uh, the prophecy which uh, uh, Sadhu gave. He didn't know that election is going to come through. But uh, on November 10, 2021, he said there's going to come an election in this area. Now, he see, he's not a local. He didn't know all this. He walked into the cabin. He started praying. An angel of the Lord came into the room and he said, I am the angel of Shelby. And then he gave him the words, what we're going to say. So he said, well, tell my people to pray so that evil will not enter in. Now, if evil have its way, why must Jesus tell us to pray it will not enter in? That means we must be the gatekeepers. Wicked people are increasing. Works of evil will increase. And one of the very interesting things that because he wrote in Tamil, so I'm interpreting, translating what he wrote. Works of nonsense. Do you know what it means? If you really think nonsense, you know, things that is going to happen will not make sense. But it's going to happen. You cannot try to figure out why did they do this or why is that going to... It will not make sense, but it's going to happen. Therefore, God will help us to make that sense. We have to pray together. Amen. Can I invite uh, Pastor London to come and say a few words right now to open in that area where we break the walls of division among the pastors. Thank you. Can put our hands and welcome him. Praise the Lord. I really enjoyed tonight. Um, we serve an awesome and mighty God. It's time for God's uh, people to come to re reality and the truth of who we really are in God. And we got some pastors that have been lifted up by men, and those walls have to be torn down before God can get the victory out of all of us. And some have been put up on a pedestal. Some think that they're God because people have made them just that. But God want to use these men of God and women of God and in order for us to do that, we got to come together on one accord for the strongholds to be broken. Uh, he was talking about Caesar had opportunity to go uh, to Raleigh, to uh, the representatives and the senators, and we prayed over the seats. And uh, it was one uh, official, he had his Bible open and the rest of them were closed. But we had the opportunity to go in and pray and something powerful happened. So it's, it's something happens when God people pray. Yeah. And it's time for us to pray. We can't see what it looked like in the natural pandemic and all of that. Then we pick and choose. Well, I'm not going to church because of the pandemic. But you be at Walmart. You, you, you be at Lowe's. You, you go to football games. You, you touch the money that somebody else touches. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But God says now we have to repent and turn back to him. So thank you for the opportunity, and I believe that in this hour, uh, God, is, God has got a remnant that's getting ready to step forward. It's people that love him, people that's tired of being tired of sin, the devil winning, but he's already losing. Amen. We already got the victory in Christ. Amen. So let's come together on one accord, because we already got the victory. Amen. And it's a win-win situation. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise God. I want to invite Bishop Randy Bodice to come and break the walls and that barrier that has built up over time. Hurts and denominationals and whatever, you know the whole deal. But there must be someone who represents something and say, God, break that demonic house. The first day when I came into this uh, uh, building to see whether we want to buy it or not, when Brother Gary and Gloria and I laughingly say, I came because they forced me to come. Come, come, you must see. Sometimes it's good to have divine forcing. 
You listen and you come and then we bought. There in the spirit I saw men with white hood and black men was tied up and they were walking down the street and the Lord showed me the spirit of murder. I didn't know what it was and I saw a noose that was hanging down as you walk through this main road. And then we, in history, we found out that this is one of the Ku Klux Klan uh, uh, dominant area in those early years, and black men were tied up and they were hung. A spirit of murder that comes true. So we are not just talking about the spirit of murder because of one black man or group of people, a spirit of murder that comes into the entire society and chokes the life of God out of us. It's not about money. You can have all the money, but you still don't know what to do. You can have all the anointing, but the oil is just choked down the pipe. And so I want to invite Pastor uh, Bishop uh, uh, Randy Bodis to come, say a few words and break that chain, and then we got into the groups, okay? Come on, put our hands and welcome him. I'm going to be very brief. Uh, the scripture said, if you smite the shepherds, you scatter the sheep. And so we want to pray tonight against the smiting of the shepherd. Uh, because it's not about the smiting of the shepherd. It's about the scattering of the sheep. The sheep are always scattered when the shepherds are smitten. And so we have to decree and declare that our shepherds will not be smitten. And if our shepherds will not be smitten, then the churches will not scatter. And if we're going to be together and we're going to stand together, is that, that there is no division among us. That we are one because the blood of Jesus makes us one. We are one body. We don't quite look like we need to look in this room tonight, uh, but this is the beginning of something that is great. Um, Pastor has such a wonderful heart. Um, this man of God is, and not only does he have a wonderful heart, he has a tremendous gift. Um, everybody that says they can see can't see, um, but he he can see. I was telling my wife, this dude can see through brick walls. Um <laughs> And it is because uh, we need that kind of anointing in order yeah. to give us direction. Uh, all seers are not sayers. And sometimes there are people who see who just pray. But then there are sometimes people who see who must speak uh, to the powers that be as well as to uh, the atmosphere and to strategize. And tonight uh, we are in a place of strategy. Uh, the Bible says if you, if you give to the prophet in the name of the prophet, you get a prophet's reward. Uh, I often say, well, what happens if, if it's an apostle? Uh, if it's an apostle, uh, Paul said, I'm a wise master builder. So, so if you sow, whether it's seeds of deeds or kindness or agreement with the apostle, it was the prophet, you get a prophet's reward. The apostle's reward, if Paul's a wise master builder, the prophet's reward is the blueprint. It is strategy. And so we pray tonight that God would release strategy that would cause us to have a work that is expedient that it won't take us as long as it took our forefathers, that we that God would do a quick work in righteousness. And I believe that this is the beginning of it. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Can we all rise up together? Let me just open up in prayer. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, put your heart together tonight. Put your spirit man together. Let's pray together in the name of Jesus and bring down the walls in the government level. Father, we pray for the spirit of accuracy. We pray for a spirit of divine intelligence tonight that God you will appoint. You said, out of the mouth of babes, you shall sing forth the praises of your people. Tonight we don't have to be so trained, but we must be willing to become your child. We must be willing to become a baby. That you will, out of our mouth, you will appoint praises to speak forth into this city. So we pray, God, anoint every son and daughter together in the name of Jesus. We pray the walls and the hurts and the wounds that has divided the churches together. Lord, in Jesus' name, tonight as we pray through, let there be a supernatural intervention. Let there be a supernatural healing. Let there be a supernatural recovery. Let there be a supernatural coming together again. Regardless of reasons, regardless of the past, regardless of our theological standing, we want to see souls saved, oh God. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the fresh river of God, Lord, tonight as we are praying, 
we release the angels of visitation to visit the officials, to visit the governors, to visit the decision makers, to visit the pastors in the night through a dream and release your fire and your power. Ignite into them a holy stirring. We want to thank you, Father. We praise you. We thank you, Father, that you have equipped us with the battle order tonight. From the young to the old. The Bible says even the weakest among us will be like the house of David. So, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Release your grace upon each one. That we will take the Lord's word and pray through. Because you said, pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a wonderful clap offering. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer. Lord, The fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on I wanna seek your face, seek your face, oh Lord. Lord make me a house, oh. make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Father, we submit all glory, all honor, all praise to you. Many churches and men and women of God are crying how to restart after post-COVID. The answer always is when the Holy Spirit will fall from on high. The answer has never changed. You said, Every big fire can be started with just one small matchstick. Let us be that small matchstick tonight. To just ignite it. That the Spirit of God will spread throughout. Spread throughout this county. Spread throughout. That churches have become houses of prayer again. New fresh revival. New graces. New words new strength and inspiration from the pulpit encouragement for everybody excitement to come to the house of God and so Father we thank you for tonight how the Holy Spirit orchestrated everything that if we ask a question who organized the day Jesus did we thank you for the family and the fellowship of our pastor friends who have come together to start off. We want to thank you for Brother Keith for bringing the word. We want to thank God for Gloria who been uh, 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 tirelessly put 
the 140 churches together in paper, calling them more than 120 churches by phone, living messages behind. I want to thank you for the tireless work that she has done. Nothing will go to the ground and be wasted. And I thank you for the peace of God and the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, to be with each one as we depart from this place. May we carry so much of the presence of Christ and go back home in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap.